Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I just thought it would be best to properly address this in the very beginning. I was wrong. Maybe not fully, but enough to where it wouldn't be right for me to not address it. In the last video I made, I talked about the whole situation with Dan Plan, and by doing so, I tried to develop an understanding of how we could have gotten to this point. However, a video came out today called why I say I'm not part of Dan Plan, made by Jay or Odd uh, Jay Alter. A guest that would appear on the channel very frequently? I'll just say a guest because, I mean, in the title he says he's not part of Dan Plan. In this video, he made many points that shines a light on certain details we didn't know prior. A lot of these points seem to indicate that the events that took place were a lot more malicious than originally thought. Due to this maliciousness, Certain points I and many people have brought up are invalidated due to the level of consciousness of the actions being taken now being fully realized. Now that we understand that Dan operated with a pretty clear mindset, it's to the point where it's extremely hard to sit here and say, mm, maybe Dan didn't know what he was really getting into, since it's clear now that he did. Now I'm not going to sit here and go through each point in the video as you can probably find many other channels to do that for you. I'm just going to go over what's important slash things that will help clear up possible misconceptions. To start off is Jay never had a share or really in his words. Now when Dan originally contacted me um, around March of 2019 uh, I was recording for fun and to help my friend. There was very little in it for me. I got very few benefits. Um, at this point also, I knew how much Dan made. To quote him directly, he made 16,000 Canadian dollars per month. But again, I don't care. This is his thing. This is a little strange, but it's understandable. Even though he knew how much Dan was getting, he still thought of it as, you know, Dan's thing. However, this idea changes due to something else that comes up. But we'll get back to that in a moment. Continuing on, he goes on to state how after Hosa lowered his share to 15% and Steven found out about how much money they are actually making on the Dan Plant channel, Steven went to Dan and asked for 20%. He also says that Dan may possibly try to state that Steven asked for 33%. This isn't really that important, but it's a good idea of how Dan might have possibly responded originally to this whole ordeal. This is the part where Dan explains that Steven is not a member. According to Jay though, Dan views a member as an original, whether this means they were there when the channel was made or if it just means that they do enough to help keep the channel going, it can fluctuate. As well as his definition of employee is a disposable unit that can be replaced. So to Dan, Steven in his eyes is neither somebody who contributes enough or was there since the beginning. It's hard to know which one, but at least we're in the ballpark of how Dan views, I guess we'll just call them how Dan views his co-workers. Now this is where the nails of the coffin are in place, ready to be hammered in. Jay states that he was meant to replace somebody on Dan plan, much like how people suspected and even rumored. But it's not the person you think. Jay was brought on to replace Hosa. Not because there's a falling out, but due to Korea law, Hosa had to go back and serve his two-year military term. Now, I want to make this next part dead clear. I got Hosa's explicit green light. He gave me full permission to release this information. If you want to, if you want to confirm it with Hosa, you can later. But I want to make this clear. I didn't force Hosa to agree to this. Hosa agreed to this willingly. Basically, I was supposed to replace Hosa. Um, Hosa has already left Korea for his ma mandatory military service for the next two years. After Jay dug around and found issues in the Dan Plan channel and presented them to Dan and how to fix them and prevent situations like this from happening, not only did Dan tell him to basically fuck off, but furthermore, Jay asked, since he was replacing Hosa, if he would have a share in the Dan Plan channel. And Dan's response was, well... No. Even though Jay was pretty much there from the very beginning, literally in the second video ever posted on the channel, about to replace Hosa, or at least stand in for Hosa for the next two years, nothing. 
So I decided to ask Dan implicitly if I would get shares. The answer was no, I would get nothing. I was pretty much told the same thing as Steven, even though I was still technically one of the originals. I was there for, I believe, the second video and onward, but I wasn't original enough for Dan. This is where the problem lies. Jay and Steven now have both went on to state the exact same idea. It's not about the money. It's about how Dan views them as people in relation to his channel. And in his eyes, they're not worth the 0.5% Jay hypothetically asked for just to see the response. Hey, I'm not gonna give you any money from my channel, but I'll, I'll shout out you and your channel. For context, Jay said Dan wouldn't pay him, but he would shout out his channel. Dan told me that he would support me if I made my own channel so that I can get started there, but I wouldn't get anything from Dan Plan, and that I would get reference in his channel, basically publicity or exposure pay. And to quote Dan again, go make your own channel. I will support you, give you shout outs, help you get sponsors, but you will never get a share from Dan Plan. Now this statement cracks me up. I'm gonna I'm gonna break the serious persona for a second because this idea of paying with exposure is so funny to me. Like it, it just this doesn't feel like something an evil mastermind would tell his servants. It it feels like something some random person would say in one of those Reddit cringe compilations on YouTube to an artist to get free art from them. What makes it worse is he isn't doing this to random people. Not only is he just doing this to his friends, or at this point really his assets, but he's doing it to the foundation of the channel, the animators. Jay said Dan doesn't care if they leave, and will, pretty much like Steven said, try to guilt them into feeling bad about asking for a higher wage. I think you can understand the fundamental flaws with this idea of thinking, and it doesn't take a business major to explain how this isn't a good way of going about things, especially in a business. Moving on, I want to talk about Dan. Dan is very headstrong, to the degree where I respect him for it. The notion that no matter how hard the wind blows, I will not bow to it. He told Jay that if people leave, it's his channel and he'll run it the way he thinks is best, and if it stinks, then oh well. It's not very smart because the point of a business, which is what Dan wanted for Dan Plan to be, is to grow. It's hard to grow something when you don't allow the room for it to blossom. Due to Dan's inflexible way of running things, the flower couldn't grow past the cement block that is Dan's plan for the channel. Though through this logic we can see how Dan is truly thinking during the build up of this entire situation. It was never about the journey to get to the destination. For Dan, what only mattered was that he got there by any means necessary, and now he has arrived. But there's no one really to congratulate him on his success. Cause yeah, he did it, but what was the cost for that success? I don't think hope is lost though. I try to be positive, and that's all I tried being in my previous video, but a single sentence from Jay makes me think that if Dan can truly piece together what went wrong, why it went wrong, and what actions he should take in order to fix the damage, it's possible that things can be fixed and patched up between everybody, or like I said, at the very least, find a resolution to the problem. That quote being, Dan might be a good friend, maybe, but he's a horrible business partner. I, I would never do business with Dan, personally. Maybe I'm looking too deep into it, but I don't know. You should never give up hope on somebody else, even if it seems as if it's too late for them to do anything. I'm going to end it on a positive note, but this video does put Dan in a very particular situation, since this and Steven's video act almost as a pincer attack on Dan, coming from both sides, inside and outside of Dan Plan. I think at this point, Dan is really out of options. Based on all the statements from Steven, Jay, and Hosa, there's really only one way Dan can approach this, and I hope it's not too late for him to figure that out. Side note, I gotta say, it's gonna be really awkward on Monday for Jay, since he and Dan share a class period together. Like, I, I couldn't imagine having to go to the same class as the person I just exposed on the internet, you know? But jokes aside, I really wanted to save this till after the situation, you know, make a video that I could be like, oh hey, everything's alright with Dan plan, you know? 
Um, but, you know, to kind of give a retrospective view, because this whole situation does make for a good character and business study, you know. Uh, can friends and business get along and just kind of ideas like that. But there were just too many points that were made in Jay's video that I feel like I needed to address. But yeah, no. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Or, oh, today's Friday, so I guess I'll see you tomorrow.